Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm checking out Links, a new framework that promises to bring truly native UI for both mobile and web using web technologies. Links is backed by TikTok and built with performance in mind, featuring a Rust-based engine, dual-threaded UI updates, and web-like APIs for easier adoption. But how does it actually work? And most importantly, is it any good? Now, a quick disclaimer, I work at Expo, but this video is purely my personal exploration and opinions. This is not an endorsement or comparison with Expo. It's just me checking out something new and sharing my thoughts. That said, in this video, I'll break down what Lynx offers, try it out in real time and discuss whether this could be a game changer. Let's dive in. Alrighty guys, so here we have the announcement. Um, the announcement, it's actually a blog from Xuan Wang, which is one of the developers and engineers that used to work at the React core team. All right, so if we keep scrolling down, we have a couple of, you know, example apps that use it. Um, actually, I think, uh, the app TikTok does not use this technology, but like Disney 100 and TikTok Studio, I think it's using this framework. So yeah, that's cool. So what is really attractive is that you can actually just use, uh, it looks like it, you can use your CSS for styling. I wonder if I can edit here. Looks like I'm not able to edit this file, but as you can see, you can generate these kind of gradients just by passing the style to a view. Something to notice is that you also have tags, but in HTML, you don't have a view, right? Uh, so this means that this is going to be translated to like a native equivalent. So this is similar to React Native, right? You have views, um, text, and this is how it looks. Another thing to notice about links is that is framework agnostic, meaning that you can technically use it with any other framework, not only React. So this is something very interesting that Lynx um, uses actually two distinct runtimes. It has a main thread runtime powered by PrimeJS, uh, which is a JavaScript engine specifically optimized for Lynx. Okay, this one is dedicated to the initial launch for high priority and event handling. And it also has a background runtime as the default for user code. That's very interesting. And I would say unusual, right? You, most of the times I think you can only, you only see one runtime. So the main thread basically is to make the app boot faster, which it seems that it's fast, right? As we can see in these um, videos, looks good. So let's keep scrolling down. Okay, so yep, looks like TikTok decided to open source links uh, to see if, you know, the community helps, I guess, to improve it. Community promotion, ecosystem growth, democratize cross-platform technologies. This is not an end, but a new beginning. <laughs> cool. So I guess we are ready to start coding, right? So I'm going to go back to the landing page and then I'm going to press the quick start. Let's see what do we need to run a Lynx project. So I need Node.js 18. I already have that. And I can just create a new Lynx project. I want to be using Bon because I like to use Bon. Okay, so I'm going to just copy this command and go to my terminal and hit create. I need a name, so I'm going to say Lynx test. And we can choose between TypeScript and JavaScript. Nice. Okay, so you can select like Slint, Prettier for formatting um, and linting. So I guess I'll select everything and hit enter. And it's ready, so we can CD and maybe open this in cursor. Okay, let me go back to the guide. I have my project created. And yeah, so we need an iOS simulator or an Android device, I think. So this is another interesting thing is that Lynx provides pre-built binaries for iOS, meaning that you don't have to build the application. They actually give you a build and you build your code on top of this build. And if you need to run it on a real iOS device, you'll need to build it from source and they have a guide. So I think I won't be doing that. Okay, so installing Xcode, I already have that. I need to download the Lynx Explorer. Okay, so here I have this file that I just downloaded. So I'm going to copy these commands and paste this in here. I'm in my downloads folder. Now I wanna go and actually change the name of this because I think it has a space and I think that can cause some issues. So I'm going to just remove the spaces and then I can come here and remove the spaces. So hopefully this won't cause any issues. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now I have this. Then I can open a simulator. So here I have my simulator and I can just drag and drop this in here. I'm going to allow, okay. And it looks like I have Lynx Explorer. So this looks similar to Expogo. <laughs> okay, so here we have it, looks nice. So I need to enter card URL. So let's go back to the guide. Then I see the into my project and then 
I need to install dependencies and then bun run dev. Cool. So I can do that. I'm going to open my terminal and then say bun install. Bun run dev. Okay. So I, I'm guessing I need to copy this, right? Um, let's paste it in here. Allow paste and go. All right, so it looks like it's working. Let's try to change something in the app.tsx, for example. So we have a text called React somewhere. Yeah, here it is. So I'm going to say hello, links. Kobe Beto, cool. So this is working. Nice. Let's go back to the guide and see what else we can do. So for debugging, they are saying that we should go and check out the links dev tool. Um, let's see what what this is, let's go to the code. Okay, so if I scroll down, this is an Electron based developer tool for Lynx, providing mobile debugging features. So this is how you would get the terminal, I'm guessing. And you can see also a preview, which is cool. And I'm guessing as well that you could be able to inspect some elements from the UI, which is nice. So I guess that's the quick start. Now we should be able to just go back to the code and start doing stuff, right? So, so far I would say that this feels uh, pretty fast. Um, and if I try to, you know, press R for example, or do something on the application, I'm not able to do anything. So I'm so used to the developer tools from Expo and React Native, uh, but so far I'm not able to do anything like having a developer menu or something like that in here. It's just like this, this standalone application. So this looks uh, very much like a React web application. Um, so I can see that we are actually using some hooks that are coming from links.js slash react. So I'm guessing that when you want to use this with any other framework like view or something, you would import accordingly um, and then use their state or things like that, right? We also have this app.css, um, which is this file and it's just like a regular CSS file. Um, let's try to see if we can change the gradient color, for example, let's put this, I don't know, green. I guess this is not I'm actually, actually, it's been a while since, um, <laughs> since I wrote CSS. So I'm going to ask cursor to do that for me. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, cool. So it's really nice that you can actually use a radial gradient just by coming in here and typing some CSS. And you can also see the box shadow. Let me go ahead and change this to be a background white. Okay, and then maybe we can change the color to be black, right? Okay, so I'm going to undo my changes. So far, what I can see is that it's actually pretty fast to reload my changes, which is cool. So I'm going to come back to the app and I'm going to ask cursor to refactor this to display a list of Pokemons. So let's see if, if if this is going to work because I don't think it's going to recognize these tags, um, but I, it, it's actually doing it. So this is nice. Let's go ahead and just save these changes and see what happens. Okay, cool. And nice, I'm able to see quickly some Pokemon. Um, so I don't know how to create a scroll view. Maybe I can just change this to be a scroll, scroll view. Okay, cool. And if I scroll down, scroll view, hit save, and <laughs> this is not working. I'm not sure how I can reload the app. Oops, uh, looks like I stopped the server. So I'm going to run it again. And then I guess I need to restart the app. Just close and open again. Oh, and I need my URL. Okay, I still have it in the... Okay, cool. <laughs> so this is not a scroll view. I'm not sure how you are going to use a scroll view. Maybe we need to have a class name with flex. Yeah, I have no idea how to do this. Let's go to the docs. So we have elements, styling, scrolling. Cool. So for scrolling, let me see if I can find something in here. So it looks like you can do something like this. 
let me just go ahead and copy this and go back and paste it in here. Hit save. Okay, so I think this is not working because I have to have this view wrapper, maybe. So let me put this in here and then close this tag down here. Hit save. And I'm not able to scroll. <laughs> so we can also use list for large amount of data. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and import a list then. Maybe this works instead of this one. And I need to close this with list. Illegal first item key. Okay, so look like I'm doing something wrong. So I'm just going to remove this and just leave the items. Yeah, this is broken. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure if I can just restart the app or, oh, I have to do this again. Oh man, I paste the wrong thing. One second and just go ahead and copy this again. Let's go and paste it in here and go error illegal so i'll just go ahead and copy the entire example since i'm not able to figure out why this is failing um going to replace the entire thing so yeah paste this in here hit save yeah i need an item view let's see okay so i'm gonna hit save okay cool now i'm able to scroll but I'm not sure how, how I can reload the application quickly, right? To see my changes. I have to copy again this thing. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to paste this in here and go. Okay, so I don't see the error now and looks like it's working. So I wonder if now I can just change this for it to be Pokemons. Okay, cool. Now I have my Pokemons. Let's add the image with a style, cool. I can see my Pokemon now. Awesome. So back to the dog guys, I wanted to learn more about navigation, but looks like we don't have any dogs about that. Um, because if I go back, I can only see elements, styling, layout and scrolling. Um, and I, I don't have, you know, time to go through each one of these items, but it looks like we don't have like navigation at the moment, maybe it's coming soon. We also have this very interesting section about native modules. And just by looking at this, um, I would say it's very similar to React Native native modules and how you can, you know, use them. So for example, in this case, you would, you know, just call a function from this module that is coming from somewhere and then do specific native stuff. Um, so yeah, here it is. So looks like you can just come here and create a new file for creating a new native module. And you have to write some Objective-C for iOS or Swift. They also have some options, very similar to React Native. So here we have more info about the elements that we can use with links, like text. Uh, we also have an image view. We already use the image in our little uh, Pokemon app. Um, and then we can just keep scrolling down. We also have, you know, the attributes style in class that we can use to set styles. So I think actually I just realized that I, I was doing something wrong because we were using class name in here a moment ago. Yeah. So I think I need to add a class to this. Okay. So if I add class app, what do we have in app? Okay. Interesting. So now it's actually taking the style. So if I say save area top, let's see what happens if I hit save. Okay. So this is really cool. Actually, now it's respecting the safe area. Um, now let's do the same at the bottom. Okay, cool. And if I scroll all the way down, maybe this is doing something wrong. <laughs> maybe it's a margin. Let's see. No, but I, I'm happy that it's doing it at the top. So this is nice. I'm just going to delete this section. Um, and yeah, this is how it looks cool. So we shouldn't be using class name. I don't know why I was using that. Okay. We have the element tree built in elements. We have view text image, and this is actually good to know that behind the elements, we are actually rendering native components. 
so for each platform, right? So we have a UI view um, and then view group for Android and X view for the browser. So this is very similar to React Native. And for what I can see here, it looks like these are the only elements that we have so far. We have list, scroll view, image, page, um, and then text and view. You can also extend your elements if you need to. And they also have a guide for extending elements, which is nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my app and I can see that I'm rendering an item, at least item, I didn't know that. Uh, but I'm wondering if I can add a class to this and then just come here and say um, list item and and then add a width and height of, I don't know, let's say 100 pixels and 100 pixels and border color. And let's just add a border color width. And yeah, yeah, that looks good. Let's go back and add this class. Okay, this is working fine. Okay, maybe I need to actually add this class into the view. Let's paste it in here. Okay, that looks better. Um, nice, so maybe we can add a margin auto. I wonder if this is going to center. Oh, wow, this is working, nice. Let's add a padding. So I'm gonna say 10. Okay, that looks better. Let me just go ahead and remove the border. Cool. So yeah, I guess uh, some of the, I think some of the CSS things are not working completely, but other than that, um, it looks nice. Um, I don't know how you can like switch between light and dark and how you would handle that, but I'm sure maybe with CSS. Um, also another thing that I noticed is that we don't have navigation for what I can see, uh, or at least I couldn't find it here. It looks good so far. It feels fast. Um, and it's really nice that you can style with CSS, right? Pure CSS. Uh, this is really cool. And this is great for people coming from web. It's also super cool that we can use, you know, the good old React for handling state and things like that. Uh, one downside that I can see as well is that it's actually hard to start working, right? We have to download the binary and then install it on the simulator. Maybe they are going to fix that in the future. Um, but it's actually also hard to kind of reload the application. I have to do that manually. Um, and that's a little painful. And then I have to paste again the URL. But you know, small details. Uh, but overall, I think, oh, okay. So you can switch to light in here. Cool. So let's see if my app actually handles dark mode. Sorry, light mode. Let's copy paste this in here. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Allow paste and go. Um, yeah, so it looks like we are not handling dark mode. Let me just ask ChatGPT to handle dark mode. Let's see if it works. Um, yeah, so it's not not working. Anyways, I I actually don't know how we can do that. Um, but also, I don't have time to go and see the documentation, but so far, I think this looks good. Um, this looks promising. It looks decent. Definitely, I don't think this is like a replacement for React Native since uh, it's super early. This is not recommended, I would say, for a production application, maybe for a specific use case that you want to try this out. That'd be nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, super impressed that you can use CSS for styling native stuff that's that's super cool it feels like we're missing some of the pieces of links uh, maybe you know they are going to start shipping more stuff later on but so far i think this is a, a nice new product and it's worth check it out and so that's it for this video guys i hope you like it and i'll see you in the next one